Good day traders. So um, I've been going through most of my emails and uh, one in particular caught my attention. And this was about a gentleman that just recently forked out about $3,000 to go do a Forex course. And um, he's come out of it being that much more um, confused about trading and about Forex than he was prior to going into it. Now, here's one of the issues that I have in regards to um, Forex courses. Now, there's nothing wrong with courses, there's nothing wrong with doing them, there's nothing wrong with studying and learning. Um, but if you know me and you know what my message is from my videos, it's always about simplicity. Okay, the, the more um, simple that you keep your whole trading approach, whether you're trading binary or forex or futures or equities, um, if it's simple, you're going to do well with it. Um, and in most of these courses, the focus is on you know trying to teach you as much or everything about forex as they possibly can. And usually within that whole um, blast of information, what is lost is actually the most simple way of looking at your charts and looking at a possible directional move. And in forex, that's all you've got to do. You really, I mean, besides knowing how to execute a trade um, and how to exit a trade. Um, the most important thing, forget about strategies for, for the present moment, the only thing that's really important is about being able to look at the footprint on your charts and knowing based off that footprint the direction in which the market is moving. That's all we realistically are trying to do. And you know the best thing that I say to people, because uh, there was another guy who wrote to me and he asked me about strategies and he's like, you know, which one's the most consistent one? And I said to him, well, it's not about um, which strategy is the consistent uh, or, or the most consistent. It's about the person who's taking or executing that strategy. It's about your ability to read the market correctly and then execute a strategy in the absolute right market conditions. And if you can do that consistently, you're always going to be ahead of the rest of the market or rest of the players in the game. Um, that's what it's about. So what I want to show you right now is possibly by far the simplest way of looking at or trading Forex. And and this is what I say also that I, when I trade binary, and this is when I started becoming uh, successful with binary, is when I looked at my binary entries from a Forex point of view. Not, you know, prior to that, what I was trying to do was I was treating it, both of them as two separate products. It doesn't matter about... Um, how much of a forex experience I had, um, I looked at binary completely different. And so when I then fitted back into the whole scope of, of my forex trades and how I look at the charts from a forex point of view, binary just became so much easier for me. Okay, That's not to say that I, I'm saying to those of you that are binary traders that you need to go now give up on binary and go study forex. What I'm saying is that when it comes to forex, we're looking at the markets or we're looking at the charts more so from an overall market perspective. And, and, and then we're looking at footprints from um, what the market is doing. And those footprints are giving us, okay, there's a directional move. So that's when, when you start understanding that, you can fit your binary trades going in line with that uh, market direction or directional move that I'm talking about. Now, I want to show you something. We're presently on the pound JPY pair. We'll go through some of these pairs and, and try and find similar stuff. But all you really have to do in, in terms of Forex is this. this. Let's go and look at this from a weekly perspective, right? So we'll stay on the 15-minute chart. Now, all I want you to do is um, count backwards. So um, this, uh, remember the, the, the three uh, colors make one day. This is a 24-hour period that we're looking at. Um, the other thing that I want you to know, if someone asked me about the high and low this this line, you don't really need it because what will determine the high and low for you on your chart is are these boxes. Okay, so in this case, look at this. This the lowest point of this blue blue box here is the low of the day. The highest point is the high of the day, and you can, if you wanted to, just drop your lines in. If you wanted to look at it uh, for the previous day, and you didn't want to pay too much attention to it. Just drop your lines in. And maybe change the color of it so you so you know. Simple as that. Okay. I, I personally don't pay too much attention to these lines here. I just look um, towards the previous day, and I'll know where the high and the lows are. That's all you've got to do. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to zoom out. 
first of all you don't need to pay attention to the colors let's just let's just count the days backwards and see where monday starts right so here's friday thursday wednesday tuesday monday so this is where the official week started and when you're trading forex check out the official week look at your charts look at the market movement look at the directional moves over the course of the week start on a monday or for those of you in the u.s um or, or europe uh, actually no u.s um look at it um, sunday night sunday evening whenever the market's open for you guys um, and generally speaking what i what i tend to do is i pay very little attention to what the market's doing um during the asian sun, uh, session on monday so you know sleep in do whatever you want reason for that is that it probably will take um, Monday or the most of, of Monday itself, uh, Asian session Monday, maybe London session Monday as well, for the market to paint enough of a picture for me to let me know of what it is actually doing. And the two tools that I tend to use, and these are the only two indicators that you possibly will ever use when it comes to um, trading Forex, oh, I do anyway, um, you could use your, besides the, the FIB, uh, uh, lines and, and the fibs are really only there for where a possible bounce may happen in terms of binary as well same thing um, but besides that the only other two indicators I ever use are my EMAs okay so um, and, and I keep fluctuating between either two, uh, two, 212 or a two, 200 um, I, I tend to personally prefer a 212 right now we've got this set um, on this laptop at 200 um, and this is the EMA 50 okay and what I'm trading is the relationship between the two of them. Okay, so in this case, what we're doing is we pay zero attention to what the market's doing. Now, just look at the, pay attention to the blue box. Don't worry about the colors of the, the candles. Um, but what we're paying attention to is the market opening. It's coming down. It's establishing a low point, And then it just kind of consolidates there for a while, comes back down, hits that point, and then bounces back up, goes up to our EMA 50. We're still doing no trades right now. We're waiting for this cross has happened, and and this is generally what we're we're expecting. The market will at the very start head in one direction, and at some point the market will correct and head in the opposite direction. We're looking at the opposite directional move. We're searching for that. When does that happen for us? Well, here's two places that you can look for it. Okay, market creates a low. Here's another low. Here's another low. But it, this keeps going. This goes throughout the New York session. This is my, uh, Monday finish. We still execute no forex trades here, right? Tuesday morning, um, Asian session starts. Market comes down, hits a uh, low. It goes past the low of Monday. Okay, wicks are created to the low, and then it climbs, consolidates, climbs, and then what we're looking for now is this cross. It crosses above. The EMA 50, right? So we're just going to zoom in temporarily. Okay, zoom in a little bit. Okay, so this was this was Monday. This is what we were talking about. Consolidation goes up, comes down. This is Monday New York session. This is Monday Asian session. Notice when you notice consolidation happening uh, or markets reasonably just in accumulation phase, and if you're looking at currency pairs as well, especially a pound pair where the market doesn't move that much, in this case, we're looking from high to low, low to high. Um, we're talking about 70 pips here. Okay, and generally for most of the duration of the day, the market possibly, let's just go from here to here, only moved about 25 30 pips so what we're expecting is that the market at some stage is going to make a directional move right here's what we do and here, here's what I like doing now if you've got the EMA 50 here let's drop a line at the official high of the day and I would wait for the market to not only climb above the EMA um, 50 but also break past uh, this high of the Asian session. Notice how it does break past and then the market stalls for a bit and then we've got wicks hitting these lines and bouncing off. Where you could possibly take your entries, you could take them here if you're an experienced trader or if you wanted to, you'd wait a little bit more. Wait for this candle to finish off. Okay? 
And that's when you get in. You jump into your trade because the market's now showing you a directional move. Um, and we're now into London session. We've also seen this cross happen. There's a couple of things you could do. Depending on how much you, what your, your criteria is, say for instance, um, you, you've set your goal to, to hit uh, 30 pips twice a week, 30 pips a week, 50 pips a week, or whatever it is, you know what your, um, your, where exactly your exit's going to be, so you wait for that. Say for instance, if all you did was 30 pips, and that was your eventual goal, um, you'll, you'll be out by the time the market hits the EMA 200. Okay, and that would have been in roughly uh, just over half an hour or so. Okay, um, you could have waited for this candle to finish. So in which case, from this point to this point, you've done about close to 50 pips. You're in and out in 45 minutes. Your job is done. And if that's all you're going to trade for the week, you're done for the week in 45 minutes. And this is uh, London session on a Tuesday, right? Now, for those of you that want to make slightly more, um, and I would advise against that, uh, it's simply once you want to become a consistent trader, stick to a set number of pips. I, I've said this to a lot of people. Um, some days they'll have great days. Other days they'll have bad days. And it's simply because they've got no fixed amount in, in terms of the number of pips or, or dollar value that they're chasing. Establish that goal, right? Um, but in most cases, um, and here's the other thing, okay, guys, um, when you know the currency pairs well, you'll know how much they'll move. So in, in this case, most pound pairs, JPY and US, uh, pound, uh, sorry, pound JPY, pound USD, they can move upwards, you know, about 150 pips or so. In this case, this one went for a ride of about 250 pips, right? So if you know that there's the potential of a minimum of about 100, 150 pip move, and you jump in, say here, from that point on, you, you still can collect about 100 pips. And so what you would do, uh, even if you didn't jump in here, you jumped in here, you can keep writing this, okay? Someone asked me about um, where you would establish your stop loss. Well, generally speaking, here's what I would do. If I've, I've seen this behavior, and this has happened at uh, early London session, um, and I jump in somewhere here, then what I would generally do is have my stop loss below the EMA 50 here somewhere. Okay, so you can do your calculation yourself. Um, the stop loss for me, and I'm not going to advise you guys to do exactly the same thing. The stop loss for me is just in case um, something goes wrong somewhere in the world, there's a terrorist attack or the president dies or something and the market just, you know, in shock, just goes boom. That's the reason why I have my stop loss. The stop loss is in there just to protect you because of stupid moves that we're going to make. You really, with Forex, you really want to calculate your entries well. And it's, and, and in doing so, it's like saying, you know what, um, you sit out uh, for almost four sessions waiting for the right moment to strike. It's, it's like you're a, a lion or a tiger or something um, in the wilderness and you're waiting for your prey, you're waiting for the precise moment in which the strike. Um, so wait for that, wait for this cross to happen, right? Now I'm going to zoom back out again because this is not exactly what I wanted to show you. What I wanted to show you is if you happen to miss this move, if you're not confident enough, if you're not a experienced trader enough, what you want to do is you want to wait for this EMA 50 to cross past the EMA 200, whether it's coming this way or whether it's going this way, at some point from uh, Monday, uh, London, uh, New York, or going into Tuesday, some point. It can even happen like you know, um, Asian session on a Wednesday. But well, that's what we're looking for. And the ideal time is for that cross to happen, um, possibly on a Tuesday. Right. Once that cross has happened, what we're waiting for is this. We're waiting for this consolidation behavior. Sometimes um, market will be up here and they'll come back and bounce off the EMA 50 like it does in this case here or in this case here. Um, but in this case, this is perfect. This is where the market comes back down and, and comes all the way down to hit the EMA 200. I absolutely love these moves. The reason for them is that once the market has crossed and they've come back, this is where we start looking for our entries. And the reason, 
is that now the EMA 50 most likely is going to stay above the EMA 200 line for possibly a large duration of that week. You know, if, if anything, the cross that uh, it will that will happen and that would be possibly a correction that happens. Uh, if this has happened on a Tuesday, that cross back down here might happen uh, most likely on Friday. So from Tuesday to Friday, you can if if you're game, you can pretty much ride that wave. But what I'm suggesting is that you now look for patterns to start appearing around the EMA 50 or the EMA 200, and the pattern simply. In this case, if, if the EMA 50 is crossed above the EMA 200, then the patterns that you're looking for is like a, a double bottom, a triple bottom. So it's either like, you know, a, a W or a W with another hit to the bottom somewhere along these lines. So it'd be like this, up, down, up, down. In this case, um, this is mid-Asian session, and I probably would have ignored this because... Um, this is it's you don't there's not enough volume for um, pound pairs usually during Asian session they tend to take off more so uh, London session um, so in this case you probably see this W pattern and then there's this big move away once you see this move and there's some degree of cons consolidation you've got your directional move accurate okay so let me zoom in there okay and I say once again see this consolidation where big green candle followed by a couple of red ones or even tiny ones here. Once you start seeing that, that is an accurate confirmation that you have chosen the directional move accurately. In this case, you're saying market's going, market's going this way. And the reason why I say this, the, the market makers, what these guys are going to do is they move the market up and then they consolidate. And this consolidation, in this case, this is going for about 45 minutes. Um, is to confuse you as much as possible. When I start seeing this, especially when it's dragging out for a bit, I get extra happy. And the reason for that is, if they're going to put in the effort to, to delay this or try and confuse you uh, for a greater period of time, uh, generally speaking, there is a, a significant move that's about to come. And what we want to do is we want to be able to time that significant move. In this case, say for instance, um, after this burst of move, um, market just kept going up. The market kept going up, um, and we missed it. Okay, well, to hell with it, we missed it. What I would have expected, again, pound JPY pair, chances are this market's going to move maybe another 150 pips or so. So what I would expect is that the market would come back down again, and that's when I would look for an entry again. And most likely, it will come back towards my EMA 50 and hit that, and I'll look for an entry around there. So in this case, um, I would avoid all of this. Market consolidates, and then the market starts going up. And and this is London session. Somewhere here, I'd be thinking, okay, look, market did come back. It did bounce off the EMA 50. Um, maybe after this candle, I'd say, okay, especially remember, again, market has stalled a little bit. Um, you, you would start to consider, okay, maybe I'm, I'm now delaying my entry. I need to jump in. Um, and I probably would consider getting in here, okay? If you kind of are a little bit nervous, get in after this candle here because this is another confirmation for you that this market's moving. Again, if you've got your set goals of 30 to 50 pips or so, even if you missed this green candle, which is about 18 pips, it doesn't matter because you still would have enough um, of an opportunity to collect your 30 to 50 later on. So in this case, what we do, we jump in here. That 20 pips plus whatever your spreads are, Market again consolidates a little, uh, a little bit pulls back, and when you see these tiny red ones, it should make you happy because there's another burst coming. So in this case, look at this, in roughly, uh, and re remember delaying it after this one. So you waited for your confirmation, you jump in here. In three candles, you've still hit your fifty, and even after that, like the market pulls back, right? Um, comes back now again some people might say well Shubha, you're looking at your charts uh, with candles already painted so it's easy absolutely but keep in mind what I'm trying to suggest in this case is where to look for your entries right now I've said once the EMA 50 crosses above in this case the EMA 200 you're looking for the consolidations you're looking for the patterns in this case the the W's or the N's um, the the triple tops triple bottoms uh, 
you know sharp V formations or, or something along these lines like where this this has come all the way back down um, and then it's bouncing back right bouncing back it hasn't happened in this case but what I also like to see is once the market oh actually it did happen with this one here where the market goes above the EMA 50 candle opens and then it comes and retests it will hit the EMA 50 uh, for binary traders that is an opportunity that you could you know where you could actually take a binary trade I personally don't like this one simply because it's way too close there's every chance that this could actually finish off in a red candle that sits just on the line but if you game, you could. Um, if, if it was a candle, if this was a long uh, green candle and this opened up here somewhere, um, price came down and hit uh, my EMA 6 and then went past my EMA 50, certainly I would actually look at taking me executing a, a binary trade, which would be a call for the remaining duration of that 15 minutes. Okay? So in this case, again, uh, what I'm expecting is uh, we're, we're, we know that the New York session is about to open. And we're also expecting that when the New York session does open, uh, markets, in this case, it's just consolidated. What it can generally do is come back for another hit towards the EMA 50. Okay, so uh, you could grab your fibs as well. Um, in this case, let's say this is the high, this is the low. Uh, okay, well, we'll use the low of the Asian session. Okay, and we can say there's every chance that the market could come down and hit because keep in mind this hasn't painted yet so we've got no idea this market go, could go up it could come back down hit most likely the 38.2 line um, or even go to hit the 50 um, and, and, and because the EMA 50 is here somewhere there's every chance that will come down to hit this or this or between these two lines and what we're looking for again is like a, a wick to the low and then the market to bounce off in this case all the market did was it bounced off the 23.6 line, okay? And this is, again, another confirmation. We're seeing wicks hitting the 23.6, and then boom. Now, if you've seen this move happen, chances are you're probably just way too late getting into it. Um, if you were, if you did get in, say, after this candle here, where it came back, hit the MA50 and ended in a green, uh, you went in there. Within the first 15 minutes, um, you'd probably be given the spreads about 30 pips in the money, right? Before New York opens, you've already hit your 50 pips, you're in and out. So in, in this case, in the space of just the London session, um, if you were game, you'd probably do two trades. One would be here to here 50 pips, and another one would be, say, here to here 50 pips. 100 pips for the week, um, 10 watts, you're in and out, you're done. You're probably done for two weeks, okay? But that's how I want you to look at it. Now, I'm going to zoom back out again, what I want to show you let's get rid of the fibs, is basically, if you're looking at it from the, the perspective that I've just said, and, and we keep it as simple as we possibly can, start of the week, wait for the market to open, head in one direction, and then we want it, We want the market to give us double tops, double bottoms, or an indication of uh, something similar to that. We want the, uh, the price to cross past the EMA 50, possibly come back and hit the EMA 50, maybe produce a week or something. Um, if you miss this one, don't worry about it. Let the market uh, cross the EMA 200 line, go up, come back down, consolidate, and then come start looking for opportunities when it comes and starts bouncing off your EMA 50 or your EMA 200 at that point in time. Once that cross happens, there's every chance that the market will continue on. Now, notice how um, the market, the, the EMA 50 continues being separate from the EMA 200. Actually, the distance increases after it's crossed. And, and notice how there's always an opportunity whenever the market comes and hits the EMA uh, 50 line. Now, I'm sure someone's thinking uh, along the lines of, well, Shiva, when is the best time to be looking for these opportunities? Uh, my experience has been um during possibly mid to late asian session and uh, going into london session i personally don't trade new york so much but the the only or probably the best time to be looking for those sorts of opportunities for new york would be early new york session so in this case see how here uh, market opens consolidates it might come back if it came back and hit the ema 50 and there was about take the damn trade because that market's heading in that direction okay so this is when maybe like, you know, Tuesday, for those of you that are more advanced traders, 
um, and then going into Wednesday. For those of you that kind of are still new to trading, possibly the better, best, best times to be looking for those opportunities cross and then when the market comes back and hits the 50. Okay, and then Im imagine if you were to take an entry, say, um, even if you were to take an entry here, you'd probably have a bit of hard tech when the market pushes back down past it because from here, you'd probably either be in the money or you'd actually be out of the money given the spread. Um, but say, for instance, you continued from Wednesday Asian ses session to towards the end or probably the beginning, look at that, the beginning of um, Asian session the next day. See how that drastic move happens. Uh, we're, we're looking at pound JPY. From there to there, um, it's three point well three hundred and thirty five pips. Okay, that's m more than what you need, more than enough of what you need. But let's just say from this point here, where market came back, hit the EMA two hundred, till the actual high of the week so far, we're talking five hundred pips. So. I'm not saying for you to do this. What I'm saying is that within those 500 pips, there are significant opportunities for you to actually look for entries. And in this case, look at this. So, so we, we wait for these bounces. We wait for this bounce off the 50 here. That's, you know, again, remember I said 50, you could do 50 pips easily here. Again, this bounce here, you could do easily 50 pips here. And say, for instance, you missed your opportunity. And for those of you in the US, you, you wake up and you could probably trade something along here. But if, say, for instance, you miss your opportunity, come back on a Thursday. Come back, wait for consolidation after New York move, um, Asian sessions consolidated. But not only has it consolidated, let's zoom back in. It has actually also come back to hit the uh, EMA 50. Now look at this. Okay, let's zoom in for those of you that probably can't see this. Here we go. Market comes down. Hits it. We've got weeks to the low. Say, for instance, we've we've missed this. Market pushes back up, and then comes back down again. And we're we're retesting these same areas. But notice how the week does not go past this point, and then the market starts pushing up again. It's actually sitting on this line, but starts pushing up again. You could take your entry off this next candle here. It's a red candle. You'd probably be worried for a little while. Um, but you could take your entry straight after this big green candle and this is within your London session. And now, for a brief moment, you'd be in the money, market goes up, we're in about 20 pips in the money, comes back down. Um, you'd probably lose some money there for just that 15 minutes simply because of spreads. Uh, but then in the next 15 minutes, market goes back up and we're about 30 so pips. Next one, the higher the next one or, or the higher the next two candles, will take you to about 36 pips. Now, given spreads, that's that's probably about 34 pips in the money. If your goal was 30 pips, you're done, right? Um, say, for instance, you banked those 30 pips, price comes back down again, and you, if you're still in the trade, you're probably thinking, what the hell is going on here? Um, and then, because this is not a clear example of what the market's looking like, but if you have a closer look, this is like a, a double bottom, triple bottom maneuver. Um, here's the first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, and the market comes back down to create almost like a triple bottom. See? So if, say, for instance, you're looking at this, and then you look at this, and you're thinking, I'm not sure what's going on, these wicks to the low is another confirmation to you that it's the market's going to head in this direction. Remember the directional move. That's all we've got to master. We don't care about indicators. We, want to, we don't want to hear about anything else that any complicated course says to us. All we want to do is look at a chart and say, all right, just from the behavior of what this is doing, just from what Shiva said, wait for the EMA 50 uh, and 200 to cross, and then wait for price to come back, possibly towards the end of the Asian session or London session, and, and hit the EMA 50. That's when you start paying attention. You look for this sort of a behavior. And again, what, what's the behavior? You're looking for a double bottom, a triple bottom, um, wicks to the low in this case. If it was if it was up here and um, the EMA 50 was below the EMA 200, then you'd be looking at wicks to the high, somewhere along those lines. And then, say for instance, you don't jump in here because you still want your confirmation and the market then pushes up. Nice big green candle. Then what you do is, um, again, I'm a, I'm a fan of when the market pulls back. Uh, and the pullback is just generally, guys speaking, that market opens, 
price would have come down this would have been a red candle briefly um, that's what's created the wick I like the pullback where the market opens comes back if it if it's hit uh, both my EMA 6 and my bad on slope line enter into a, a trade somewhere here within that 15 minute candle by the end of it you would be given uh, your spreads about 20 pips of money within half an hour you've hit your 50 pips safe trade wise I don't care where this markets going to go again it's pound JPY pair and you know it's possibly going to move about 150 pips look at that the high of this candle is about 147 pips you could keep going but if you've established your goal You've hit your 50 pips. Get the hell out of there, bang that cash, go out to dinner, go do whatever you need to do, go to sleep. Um, but if you really want it to be game, you could just keep pushing that for a bit. Okay? And that's all you have to do. You don't have to know anything else about Forex. All I want you to be able to do now is look at your charts. If you're using the templates that I've got on my website, then you'd have this in front of you right now. And all you're doing, either on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, is looking for the this behavior, looking for the market to uh, cross past the MA50, um, keep going, and then cross the MA200, come back, and that's when you want the coming back to come and then um, look at the behavior between um, candlesticks or price action and EMA50. Okay, if EMA50 is above the EMA200 and this has happened, the cross has happened, um, say on a, on a Monday night or a Tuesday, um, even early Wednesday, um, then you're looking for double bottoms and uh, triple bottoms, you're looking for wicks to the low, you're looking for hits on the EMA50 and bounces. Look for the bounce, significant bounce away. When, again, the best time, end of Asian session, somewhere during the London session, right? Uh, it can also happen for those of you trading in New York session, start a New York session. That's it. This can't get any easier, all right? So let's just quickly have a look at last week see what happened uh, with pound jpy last week so this is the start of this week friday thursday wednesday tuesday monday okay in this case notice how we we wait for the cross to happen the market kind of starts a bit of a consolidation comes hits the 200 and then bounces off okay in this case you could possibly look for a trade off here but I want to keep it extremely simple this is for more advanced traders where you're looking for same sort of opportunities happening during um, uh, London session off the two uh, EMA 200 um, again advanced traders what what you would have done in this case we're here okay advanced traders what you would have done in this case you would have waited for this comes down market uh, that's the first wave second wave third wave here it's bouncing off the EMA 200 and say for instance you don't get in here you can uh, wait uh, wait wait for this can candle to to complete opens comes down hits the EMA 200 again remember I said earlier this is possible opportunities for binary traders to take that call trade um, and, and this is a better one because there's a fair distance between uh, whether my other candle open and hitting the EMA 200 okay this is one of those trades you could put a lot of money on there, um, uh, but I didn't tell you that. Um, anyway, so say for instance you've missed this one, and then you also you're kind of a bit wary because candle opens, goes red, and then goes up and then comes down, and consolidates. This little doji here is a solid confirmation to me that this market's going to continue heading up. This is not a confirmation that this market's going to head down. Again, the, the market makers will, will put in that consolidation simply because it's trying to confuse the newer traders, okay? And it, it still confuses a lot of experienced traders as well. So what we do then is you take an entry off the next candle. Now, you could take an entry, wait for the pullback, so your spreads are kind of absorbed within this wick area. Or if you kind of just wanted to jump in, you can. Jump in here at some point. Uh, candle pushes back up and you would have been probably 27 pips in the money for a while camps down closes at about uh, probably just under um, uh, 20 pips okay next candle opens same thing we go up to 30 pips in the money if that's your goal you are in and out of the market in two candles in half an hour again if um, you're at a stage say you've grown your account to a stage where you're doing 10 watts um, or say for instance you're doing 5 watts 
30, 30 pips at 5 lots for you is still 1500 bucks. For a lot of people, that's more than they earn in a week. That's it. You're done and dusted for the week. You can go do whatever the hell you like for the rest of the week. Okay? Um, you just have now um, 30 hours of the rest of the week that's completely free for you. But for those of you that are more experienced traders, you want to hit 50, you know when this candle pushes back. And even probably when uh, this week happens here, uh, you can use your EMA 6 similar to how you use your EMA 50. When this week happens here, some, some will panic and say, look, you know, I was 30 pips in the money. Um, I'm at about 5.9 pips right now. And given spreads, you'd probably be very close to um, break even. Now, uh, you'd probably be a little wary, but market does push back up at somewhere within that 15 minutes and you're back to 23. Now, again, what we would be expecting is a chance that the market may push back down, either hit a fib line or um, uh, do a fake out and hit your EMA 50 again. All right? It could do that, but in, in this case, in both, both examples, it hasn't. Um, what happens within the first 15 minutes or, or the first half an hour of New York session? Look at this. This breaks. At some point here, you're already 50 pips in the money. What you could do is jump out of that trade very quickly at 50 pips and you're comfortable, you've done your, your duty for the week. Um, or um, in, in some cases, what I like to do is wait for the candle to, to complete. So in this case, when the candle's skyrocketing, don't jump out, okay? Um, what I would do is once the market starts, to, when, when the candle starts to kind of waver and it's bouncing, that's when I would consider. Or say for instance, you know, I was aiming for 50 pips, I've hit 100, I don't care what the market's going to do for the rest of the night. I'm out. Bank my cash. All right? So you can do that. But, again, this move here is for more of the experienced traders. Um, practice it, though, if you're new. But what I would also do then, zoom out again, is I'd wait. I'd wait for the market to come uh, past my EMA 200. Consolidations happen. Um, here's where the market, uh, this, this EMA 50, does break below the EMA 200 um, and this is where confusion will set in for you a little bit because you'll be like okay what I'm expecting though here is possibly um, this to come down and then maybe um, a double top or something to be created but in this case it's not doing it right so what you do is you wait and what are we waiting for we're waiting for this to come down below the EMA 200 and now it's time to go back up again because of this big uh, green candle what this is showing me is con confirmation that this is possibly going to continue on going this way. Now, I say this again. If you are not certain, don't trade. Don't take that trade. Why? Because you have another opportunity that comes along. And here's what you could do. Say, for instance, this finishes off and you're a little bit wary. New York session opens because you're expecting a hit to the low. You get this little... Uh, red candle with wicks to the high and the low and then you wait for this candle to, to open and finish off Remember I said pound pair chances are it will possibly move for about 150 pips uh, Say for instance from here to here. It's about 60 say 70 pips We still have a good 80 pips to go that, that, that we can we can rely upon This candle opens. It's a nice green candle. You can look for your entry somewhere here. Why? Market's given us a confirmation this cross is happening. We're heading in that direction. Look for your entry somewhere here. Within the first 15 minutes, we're about 8 pips in or 5 pips in the money given spreads. Within half an hour, you're very close. 45 minutes, you've hit your 50 pips. Again, you're out. Right? If you were to jump in here and you wanted to continue on going this way, and I know there's a lot of you possibly thinking, well, Shiva, you know, this, this market went up. Uh, 180, 190 pips, why do you jump out in 50? Well, here's the thing, guys. Remember I said earlier, for those of you that are saying, hey, well, sure, it's different in real time. Yes, it is, and no, it's not at the same time. If I'm here, and I've just hit my 50 pips here, right? I don't know that the market's going to continue doing this. For all I know, especially after this candle here, for all I know, the market makers might consolidate for you know, half an hour, 45 minutes, maybe for an hour and a half, and then maybe just jump up slightly, or it might just come back and do a correction and come back towards my EMA 50. Remember, my goal was 50 pips or 30 pips. Once I'm hit, I'm done. 
If you can teach yourself to be consistently able to pick just these moves here, when, when the market comes back and hits the 200 or the 50, and you've chosen your direction accurately, you have no problems whatsoever in being consistently able to hit your, 50, your 30 or 50 pips maybe once or twice a week. And once you're doing that, no one in this world can stop you from making really good money. So again, um, after this, look at this, after this cross, um, market really doesn't come back to hit our EMA 200, right? It happens here early on in the Asian session. Here, where it's doing this, remember we said um, once it crosses again, end of Asian session and then going into um, London session, what we're looking for here, see how this wick, uh, this crossed, but then we were looking for this candle to come hit, create a wick, and then push up. We didn't get that. So once it's come back and hit that, we wait. And we're also now looking at the same, okay, this point was hit, this point was hit, it broke this point, and, and then consistently the market's kind of uh, declining. So in this case, remember the other thing that I said is you'd probably draw a line at some point, um, it's an Asian session at the top here somewhere, and you'd say, okay, if I'm a little bit nervous, I'd wait for the market to break past that line and give me some sort of indication that's going to continue. In this case, it doesn't even do that. It comes back down, closes here, and then what we're getting is another red candle doji on the EMA 50, and then boom, right? At, at this stage, I'm no longer looking for a, a long trade. I'm also not looking for a short trade when it comes to Forex. Why? Because I have no idea what the market's going to do for the time being. I've got no indications from the footprint. All I know is it's consolidating. It's possibly going to do something soon, right? Going back here, if I have done these trades, if I've done this one, um, then I'm done for the week. I really don't care what the market's doing for the rest of the week, right? Now, this is keep in mind, this is just one currency pair. What we're doing initially on a, uh, a Monday, um, is scanning, uh, and again, Monday, late Asian session, um, London session, New York session, and then going back into Asian session Tuesday, we're scanning all these currency pairs. In my, in my case, what I would most likely do is scan the pound JPY, pound USD. Uh, you could look at the Euro USD because you could probably get 50 pips out of it, but it'll just be longer. Um, or I'd, I'd look at the CHF pips, so USD CHF or CHF JPY. Why CHF pairs and pound pairs? It's simply because, remember in the examples that I showed earlier, where you can hit your 50, 30 to 50 pips at about two candles. If, you, if you've got, you've nailed your direction accurately, you can nail your 30 to 50 pips at about two candles. And, and that's half an hour, you're in and out. That's all we need, right? So um, I'd look for that. And if um, the market is behaving as I showed you earlier this way, which is how it did this week, where there's a, there's a very clear and distinctive cross happening um, here in Tuesday, on Tuesday, and then you see this hitting um, early Wednesday. You trade these. Pick the easy ones. Don't pick the complicated ones. Okay. Now, just to finish off, um, give you a bit of a, an analogy. Um, this is something that those people that I've spoken on the phone with that I've explained to. And it's simply that when it comes to trading, how you've got to look at it, I think I have mentioned this in some of the other videos, you've got to look at trading of the charts of Forex as like a, a, a game, a sport, um, preferably a like a team sport. So say, for instance, it's um, American football or soccer for those of you in Europe, or you guys call it football as well, or for the rest of us normal people, rugby. Um, sorry, guys, I had to say that. Um, so basically what we're doing is we're saying that you've got a whole heap of teams within your your sport. The teams in this case for us are all these currency pairs. The forex market is the actual game. The charts that you're looking for, looking at, I should say, is the actual pitch. That's where you're playing the game, right? Now, strategies for us, it's, it's a couple of things. One is where, you know where your coach a, the coach gives you a play, a game, a strategy, and it's basically saying, say, this currency pair here, which is another team that we're playing against. So what we know is that team has strengths and weaknesses. We know, for example, 
um, this team plays really well in the rain or really well in the cold. So what we do is we'd have specific strategies to play against them in the cooler conditions, right? And then we'd also have specific strategies to play against them in the warmer conditions because we'll say, well, they're weaker um, during the heat, so we're going to uh, apply a different play towards that, okay? Um, the other thing that I want you to really know, and, and so the, here's the thing, guys, uh, different, different strategies would apply to different currency pairs because you would always apply different plays to different teams you would play against, right? And that's simply based off what their strengths and weaknesses are, okay? Here's the most important thing, though. Unlike any league out there where, you know, there is a, there's a pool and um, you kind of progress through your games based on your wins, losses, or uh, pool games, in this case, no one's ever going to force you to play a game that you don't want to play. No one's ever going to force you to play against the team that you don't want to play, play. So in this case, you look at Pound JPY, and it's really not behaving in a way in which you would recognize and you say, I don't want to play with these guys. I, don't, I really do not want to um, apply any sort of strategy against them. Don't. You get to choose which game you actually play. You get to choose which currency play, um, uh, pair that you can play against. This is where our strategic advantage comes in. It's almost like in poker where they are showing you their cards before you even decide to put any money down, before you even decide you want to play, right? So you go through this, and you'd be picky, you'd be, you know, for, for those of you if, you, if you're moody, hey, this is the best time to become moody, because it's like you're saying, I don't like this, I don't like the look of this, I don't like the look of you, uh, CHF, JP1, so I'm not going to play with you, right? Go find another friend to play with, see if your USD is your friend. If your USD is behaving like this, and like, I don't know what the hell these guys are doing, Go find another friend, right? You're a JPY. I think, hey, hold on a second. This is what Shiva said. Let, let me um, go backwards and have a look and analyze what the market's doing. So Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. Look, look see here. Uh, Monday early, they cross, and then just they, they continue crossing in a specific direction. Now, remember, we're looking for... Um, and it's, it's going to happen probably Monday night or Tuesday when this actual cross is going to happen, this one. We're not looking for this initial cross. We're looking for this cross later on, right? So, again, here, um, low. We're on uh, Euro JPY now, which is correlated with Pound JPY. Similar behavior, see? Um, the other thing to note, if they're both behaving the same way and you've got enough money in your trade account to be able to take trades on both, hey, why the hell not? You do 50 on pound JPY, you do 50 on euro JPY, um, you can take the rest of the butt off. So again, same thing, you're looking for these opportunities. Advanced traders, um, you would look for the double bottoms here, give you an indication this is more of a triple bottom, and this could also be a head and shoulders pattern. Remember, pattern is everything. Now, bounces off, you've missed it here. Let's zoom in. You've missed it here, or, or here, say for instance, uh, or even here. What we do, we wait. Why do we wait? We wait for confirmations. Market comes, hits here, big green candle going north, right? You're not too late. You can jump in here. Yes, the market's going to come down for a while, scare you a little bit, but by the end of the first candle, you're about 10 pips in money. By the end of the second candle, about 6. By the end of the third candle, in about 45 minutes, you've hit your 15, 16 pips. Now do you see why I prefer my pound pairs and CHF pairs as opposed to euro pairs? Because here in 45 minutes, I'm still only stuck at 15 pips, right? I will still get my 50 from here onwards. But my 50 takes me a bit of a while. So from here to here, we're talking maybe an hour, two hours, three hours. We're talking maybe just over four hours of being in that trade. Again, you decide. If you're comfortable with that, certainly go. Um, with your um, euro pairs we're talking something to the tune of maybe 80 to 100 pips here we go it's about 100 pips okay uh, new york opens this prior to new york open it does reach about 80 pips so if you're up here somewhere and you calculate from 
say down here to here, you've missed about 30 pips, so you've still got about 50 pips of the game that you can play. Again, you choose your currency pairs, you, you choose the teams that you want to play against. I hate playing against the Euro, it takes way too long. So same thing, again, uh, keep in mind, this cross has happened, you've missed that, newer traders, here's what we're doing now. This is Tuesday, we're going into Wednesday. Why we're going into Wednesday? Because this didn't come back to hit our EMA 50 after the cross, right? Excuse me, and the cross happened here, so we're waiting now. Asian session on Wednesday, market comes, hits our 50, consolidates, goes up. This, if you look clearly, you probably have a double or triple top in there somewhere, right? Goes up, again, probably middle of Asian session, I really don't want to do that. So we wait, we wait for towards end of Asian session, we're looking for an entry, possibly start of um, London. Notice how consolidates comes down, um, down, up, down, up. That is a double bottom. Hits it on the EMA 50. Boom, market pushes back up. Again, if you want a confirmation, this one, wait for this candle as well. You've missed it, we jump in on the next one. Okay, here's a reason why you probably want to, you decide whether or not you want the pullbacks. I personally like the pullbacks. The pound pairs tend, tend to give me a pullback simply because the, the pullback usually eats up the spread for me. So I'm very comfortable once the candle comes back in the green. But if you wanted to jump in here, in the first candle, you're about 18 pips in the money. By the end of the second candle, which is half an hour, you've gotten to your 40 pips. Right? Again. If you do 30 pips or so, you're done in two candles. This is Euro pair, and you're still done in two candles. Fantastic, you're in now. 10 lots, uh, 30 pips, three, th three grand. Uh, 50 pips, or in this case right now, uh, 41, we're talking um, four grand, right? Uh, if I was to trade a pound account for Aussies, uh, guys, four, 10 lots at 40 pips for us, give and take spreads, say it's four grand, 4,000 pounds, the conversion into AUD, we're, to, we're looking at 6,000 Australian dollars in half an hour. We're done and dusted. And again, remember, I'm not talking about anything else. I didn't even use the fibs in this case. All I'm saying to you is wait for the damn cross, consolidation happens, and look for the behavior of price around the MA50. When? End of Asian session, start of uh, London session. And you can again see in this case here, this is another beautiful example, where the market does do its thing and it comes down, doesn't come all the way down to the uh, EMA 50, but it does exactly the same thing. Uh, first wave, second wave, third wave, and then up. In this case, if it's moved that drastically up during um, a New York session in the middle here, I'd probably avoid trading especially for a euro pair because I know if, if it's moved from say here to here and where it's already done 100 pips, well it doesn't have that much further to go, avoid it. Go find another team to play with, okay? And, and in most instances when it comes to Forex, by the middle of the New York session, you're done and dusted. By about midday, um, there's really going to be no major moves happening afterwards. So if you're trading Forex, um, just US session, guys, look for your entries at the start of the New York session. Wait in this case, if EMA 50 is above your EMA 200, what you're looking for is the hit down and then climb. So you're looking for an entry somewhere here, okay? Um, calculate how much you will, what pips you want to collect, the dollar value you want to make, and whatever your exit's going to be. You get your exit, get the hell out of there, okay? Same thing again here. Look at what, uh, going into Thursday, look at what the market did. It came down, consolidated, came and started behaving around the EMA uh, 50. Again, comes down. We're kind of confused in this case. Again, we're going. We're looking for opportunities towards the end of the Asian session. So again, it comes down. We we've, we've got our wicks to the low, right? Goes up and then comes back down again. Boom! We've got a nice solid candle that's showing us it's done its thing. Now, what you could do, and this is where the confidence really has to come in. If you want to wait for another confirmation, you could look at this red candle here. That to me is a confirmation. Why? It's 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 a doji. It's 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 there designed to distract you. So what we do is we look for again either the pullback or straight off the bat there. Now in this case, 
to see any real profit, you probably have to wait uh, 45 minutes. In this case, you probably only make um, about um, 15 or so pips. Again, another reason why I don't like um, the euro pairs. Um, in about an hour, you'd probably be crying foul. Uh, and, and by now, here's where a lot of traders will jump out because they'd be scared. You're about four, four and a half pips out of the money. Um, but it does finish off with um, being a bit, at least 10 pips in the money. Now, if you were to continue riding that train before the end of London session, or before, sorry, I should say, before the open of the New York session, um, this would have reached about 49 pips from where your entries be, give and take spreads. So see what I mean here? Like in this case, you'd have to be a little bit wary, but if you've got your directional move accurate, then this is what's gonna happen, this pull away, this behavior around the EMA 50 is your confirmation. And this wick here, this candle here, especially is the, one of the most beautiful things. For, for those of you that uh, wouldn't wanna consider um, trading like uh, doing a, a binary trade off of that. If you wanted to trade that, um, look to see where it hits. Look at that, it's beautiful. That's the high, that's the low. This comes back down and hits our 61.8 line. For those of you trading in binary, these are the moments in which you take your 61.8 trades simply because you know that the directional move is this way. And once this is done, if you haven't entered into your forex trade anyway here, you enter here. Why? This is a confirmation for you. This market's going to continue going up, right? So again, if you were to enter here, even at the bottom of this, you'll still be in the money. At the top of this candle, you, you're about 30. Again, you know, you hit your 30 pips, you're done and dusted. So all you've got to do. All right, guys, so I don't want to make this video way too long. It already is as long as it is. So um, in, in terms of Forex, again, if, if you just focus just on that, you'll make money. That's all. Don't worry about indicators. Don't worry about what anyone else is telling you. Don't worry about the complicated stuff that people are, are, are posting about in Forex. And I'll tell you this again. Um, take me as an example, right? Right now, guys, I have over 5,000 subscribers on uh, YouTube. I have... Uh, tons of emails of people asking me about the trade copy or asking me about trading for them. Um, one guy's offered me 1500 bucks a, a month to trade for it. If I had, uh, out of the 5,000, if I had um, 100 people offer me that, right, that's um, uh, 15,000 or so, just me doing absolutely nothing. If I set up my trade copy, I could make millions off of, of just membership fees. It's as simple as that. If I get a thousand people, remember that idea that I had um, a thousand people paying a thousand dollars a month uh, for the trade copy and you walking away with 10, 15, 20 thousand a month in profit, that thousand dollars a month will amount to a million. I could make that, right? And this is how what I want you to start thinking about in your head. But the fact that I'm not doing that, I'm kind of moving away from wanting to do trade copies. I'm, I'm moving away from wanting to do like you know membership sites or all of that stuff. It's simply because this, for those of the people, sorry, those people that you um, give so much weight to that are posting on forums, that are talking about a whole heap of complicated shit, they're there because they're not really making any money out of this. And the ones that are making good money out of the trading game they're not going to be wanting, they're not going to be posting on forums, um, they're not going to be wanting to do groups, they're not going to be wanting to do any of that sort of stuff, because you make enough money and it's like, yeah, I don't want to be a part of that, I can go and live free. Keep that in mind, so decide who you actually follow in this game, stop reading the stuff on the forums, learn from them, yes, but don't rely upon them so heavily, because trading is as simple as waiting for a couple of EMAs to cross and then looking for price action behavior over the course of that EMA 50, right? It's as simple as that. All right, guys, enjoy your weekend, and I will see you guys next week. All the best.